Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, doing a little bit of a change of pace this time uh, for the videos for uh, DCS rather than giving you a walkthrough or uh, a recording of uh, what's going on in the server. Just want to share with you uh, something new that I ordered from realsimulator.com. Uh, so this is going to be a F-16 stick. Um, the base that it goes into, which is very similar to how the Thrustmaster Warthog base looks. And then I have this base plate here that also came with it. Uh, so I just want to give you a quick kind of overview of, of the stuff and uh, kind of first impressions. I took it out of the um, shipping wrapping just to make life a little bit easier. But basically you're going to see uh, the stuff kind of for the first time with me as well. Uh, real quick. And sorry, this is a half-assed video. I don't do unboxing videos or really anything like this. But we're just going to deal with it. Here's the realsimulator.com site. As you can see they make F-16 grips. This is kind of their product catalog. Uh, they're a company out of Spain. So originally I ordered the F-16 uh, SGRH-CE, which is the collector's edition. Uh, there's right hand grips and left hand grips. So LH or RH, I'm right handed so I got a right hand grip. Um, the one issue though is that um, when I ordered this, it wasn't actually in stock. So they ended up sending me, uh, I think the GLH instead. Yes, that's correct. Uh, so I'll pop this guy open so we can just take a quick look at it. Also got the R3 Lightning base and uh, the R3 plate. So here's the grip, blah, 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 all the deets. Like I said, I wanted the one where it had little painting like the the buttons painted and whatnot it's not the one i ended up getting because they were out of it or they they said it wouldn't be done until december and i didn't feel like waiting forever for this thing so i just said all right uh the base or i'm sorry the r3 lightning is what the uh feedback goes into and the plate the plate's kind of the most basic thing so here's the plate it is very he heavy, very heavy duty. Uh, there's little feet on the bottom. I hope you can see that. This is the worst review ever, and I'm trying to not swear. Here's the screws that are going to mount um, the lightning to the plate. Boom. All right. And what I'm upgrading from, by the way, since I'm looking at it, is a Satec X52. This is the super old version where it's actually called Satec. Here's uh, the joystick. So I, my plan is, is to keep uh, the throttle, because I really I just like using this one. I'm very happy with it. It has bump stops for afterburner and for kind of neutral, and I really like that feedback. And I haven't seen another throttle on the market that I'm that excited about. So I'm going to continue to use this. Um, but the joystick I'm probably going to leave unplugged uh, and just uh, use the new one. All right, so let's go to, I don't know, the joystick. So pop this guy open this is how it comes so the padding is really nice uh, the, the foam is kind of cut in the shape comes with I don't know the real term for what these are but I could tell you in real life um, these normally go over plugs that sit on the pitot tubes on the plane and so these will just be dangling and you, normally they're red um, and it'll say like remove or something like that. And usually these will be like on the coverings or part of a covering that's on the pitot tube and then you pull these off. And then I think on an aircraft video or, or uh, uh, um, carrier videos that I watch when a pilot is getting ready for takeoff, the, the crew person actually hands this to them and they count them out to make sure that they removed them all. Anywho, so that's kind of a nice like little detail that came with it. Uh, other than that, it's just the joystick itself. That rattling is this, which screws onto the base. Um, so my first impressions of it. So I'm six eight. I'm a big dude. I and and you know on my old joystick, I have the the thing all the way down so my hand can kind of rest on it, and my thumb is in the right position. This one, I would say my hand sits in a in a pretty. I mean, it's, it feels pretty comfortable. It's almost a stretch, I'll say to get up to these buttons. Like I'm really stretching my thumb out to get there. Not in an uncomfortable way, but I do have to kind of get my 
my hand off the base to get some kind of leverage to push up. If I leave it kind of seated, it's easy to push up. Coming down is, eh, it's not that bad actually. And this isn't a criticism. I think this is molded on the real life um, stick. So I'm just kind of giving some feedback that if you have smaller hands, like smaller height hands, um, you might be having to hold up on the stick a lot uh, rather than just kind of resting it down on the base. Uh, so for buttons, there's a mode selection button up here that turns. Trim switch goes up, down, left, right. Um, it feels like it has a little play in it. And I wonder how that compares to... Like this, I feel like I'm going left and right. I feel like... I don't feel there's any wobble room to go on an angle. With this... I feel like I'm going right and left. I feel like I'm going up and down, but I'm not certain if there's also an angle. It almost feels like I'm gated, like I can't move it. So I wonder if it's sliding into like a position there. We'll have to see when we get this set up. Uh, another button here, and this one pushes down as well. And I think that's a feature that can be activated or deactivated, the, the pushing down of all the buttons. I think everything pushes down. Anyway, so we have this up here. I think it's also a hat switch feels like it's clicking and down. Uh, the castle switch up left, right, all the things feels good. This nubs up and nubs down. It feels like it goes left and right as well and down. Got this switch here. It goes forward, backward, left, right, and down. I can see how down might be a problem because in the heat of battle, if you're mashing it and pushing this way, you probably push down and forward. And I bet that can, can sometimes get in the way of stuff. Um, switching to the other side, or I guess the left side. Got a pinky switch down here. It looks like that may also be another hat switch. It kind of feels like it is. That would be weird. But it feels good. I mean, it, it feels doable. It's just not, sorry, not somewhere I would expect that to be. All right, trigger. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm horrible at this. So there's a very tactile, 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 whatever the word is, click right there. I would imagine it does feel like I'm hitting a second thing down there. So it does seem like a two detent. So one, two, which is great for the F16. And then I imagine this is gonna be a clutch button down here. So probably normal flight is, you know, you're using, you're manipulating this and then pull that in or, you know, do a double pull. On the other side, uh, there's this one here. Uh, is that one? This one doesn't feel like it's a, um, uh, like a hat switch. This one just feels like it's probably a button. Again, we'll have to test that out once we get everything hooked up, but it seems like it's just a down button. Uh, one thing I'll say, so like the the kind of big thing I noticed from this is how it feels. It's covered in like a paint maybe, or it's the molding of the plastic and the type of plastic or something, but it's a very gritty, industrial feeling thing. Like it feels good. Um, it has weight to it. Not a lot of weight, like I'm not, I, I could hold it up, I'm not getting tired holding it, but it feels firm and it feels solid. Like I'm squeezing it, like it feels real. Um, uh, it, it's very nice. Uh, now to fly it, again, I don't know, I haven't gotten there yet, uh, but the, 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 the texture of it feels good. The buttons feel good. I, I can feel it in my thumb, like the vibration of them making their clicks. So with my headphones on, you know, I, I think I would know I'm hitting the button. So that feels good. It's a little, if I had to complain about them, and, and this is a minor one, it feels like they kind of float a little bit. So by that, I mean like, I don't feel like I'm entering a position. It's kind of like a, like a very, it's almost like it's on rubber. And I have to just kind of fold the rubber in and I'm, and I'm there. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, so I'll be interested to see, like, do I ever misclick? Like, is it, it, does it wander, I guess, is the, 
the thing I'm saying. Like if I got if I go right, is it actually going to kind of go up or or go down instead, or does it know I'm going right? So we'll see about that. But again, I think this company makes um, stuff for real simulators. Well, hence their name, right? But um, I think that they do stuff for like real life, um, you know, military uh, things, and this is just kind of their consumer market uh, thing. On the bottom. Um, I don't, I don't own a warthog and never have, but I'm told that's what the bottom of a warthog looks like. So I hear that you can also use, uh, their, um, I guess the, the sensor mechanism that this screws onto. Um, uh, and I'm sorry, I don't know the proper name for it, but, uh, this will screw into that. Um, so the packaging, I mean, this box is great. I mean, it's very nice, very nice wood. I like how they kind of burned in real simulator. <laughs> Um, nice hinges, kind of a bottom stamping too. I mean, it's very nice, but here's my one criticism of it. Now, if I, if I was a company that had 20 simulators and the army was contracting me and sometimes I was going to get a Warthog pilot and sometimes I was going to get an F-16 pilot and sometimes an F-18 pilot, and maybe I had to switch stuff around, this would be so nice. You could put these away, close it put it on the shelf, you know, take them out, take them, ship them, do whatever I need to do. I will tell you, after removing this joystick from the box, I'm never going to use this box again, ever. And a matter of fact, I live in New York City. I have a very small apartment. I don't even know where the hell I'm going to put this to just keep it out of my way. And I'm sure that that just the construction of this, I mean, it is, it is a very nice, smooth, quality wood box. I mean, it's a legit... It, it's 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 craftsmanship. It's very nice. But I bet this box added another twenty, thirty, forty, fifty dollars to the cost. And I'm not knocking Real Simulator on that. It's very nice. I just would have probably liked the option to just get the joystick, uh, rather than having to pay for this packaging that other than the cool factor for receiving it, I'm I'm just never gonna use it. And I'm never gonna put this away that I can foresee. Um so that's, I guess, my only criticism of it. But other than that, I mean, it's it's great. I mean, I know a lot of people are, are very into packaging and, and like good packaging. I mean, this is very good packaging. Um, it's just, for I, I just think it's un unnecessary for my purposes. All right, so let's take that guy out. Let's close this and put that there where it'll, where it'll probably sit for the next two years and all right so now we get to the r3 lightning which is the sensor let's see if there's a right way a right name for this high quality force sensor blah 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 okay so <clears throat> this one so again on top we see uh real simulator this is actually i'm not sure if that's a sticker i mean it's embossed uh but it's very nice uh i mean it looks legit like, I mean, it's badass looking. I mean, it seems like something that, you know, would be part of uh, uh, something that would be, you know, in a military base and just, you know, in the in the toolbox or something like that. Uh, so you pop this bad boy open. Get inside here. Here's the presentation of it. So we have a USB cable. Uh, I think one of the joysticks comes with Bluetooth. I don't think I got that one, so I think I need to keep mine wired. I prefer wired, to be honest. I have nothing but battery and connectivity issues with wireless stuff. I mean, it's good at first, and then it's garbage later, so I'm actually happy to have that if that's what this is. Uh, then inside we have this foil anti-static bag, and that's going to be the sensor. I'll get that out in a moment, and we get another one of these, um, well, whatever they are. I don't know the right name. Follow me, arrow, checker flag. I wonder what that means. Anywho, all right, how do I do this one-handed? Again, I'm sorry. I'm disgracing the fine genre of unboxing videos. This isn't my day job, and I don't care. I just didn't see a video like this online, and I'm doing this to be helpful. Okay, so there was a wire inside that little piece of paper and the paper says I want to inform you that recently we have detected Thrustmaster Warthog stick bases with the new electronic board on these new PCBS the J1 connection is a 5 pin instead of a 6 pin so 
if this is your case, we send you an additional cable with a six pin connector to an SI to connect to the J6 socket, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so basically I think what this is saying is that if you have the Warthog that you need a different connector, but they're supplying the connector, which is nice. Uh, I'd like to inform you that this Lightning has installed the latest firmware version. If you like, please visit the next links where you could download the necessary tools and latest firmwares and receive extra support from the user's experience. So uh, I'll say, just take this as a moment to say, when they didn't have the stick, they like reached out to me, the um, collector's edition, they reached out to me, they're like, hey, sorry, we don't have it right now. Um, we could send you the the non-painted, the non-collector's edition one. Um, and the base plate uh, is going to take two weeks. So if you want to wait two weeks, we'll send you the the whatever the, the normal version, I guess you could say, um, and the base plate. Or you can wait till Christmas, and we'll have the collector's edition uh, ready. And I'm like, I don't need to wait, you know, till Christmas just to have the same stick, but with you know painted characters on it. So whatever. So I just said, yeah, go ahead and send it. Um, also, upon them shipping this out. Um, I got a email from them signing me up to their forums automatically. I haven't visited it yet, but I thought that was really nice. Like it seems like they have a really good uh, community uh, that that they're doing with this. And also, um, well, I don't remember what the also was, so we'll just keep going until I remember. So let me. So here it is. Uh, we have the R3 or the real simulator. Blah blah blah. R3. I remember what I was going to say. So if you buy this and you live in the States, um, you'll have to pay a duty tax uh, on the, the thing. And you, they don't, Real Simulator doesn't tell you about that. It's not their problem to. Um, but uh, this was shipped via DHL from Spain to the United States. And there was, a, I think, a $50 tax that had to be paid to DHL. So you'll get a text from DHL and an email saying they won't deliver this until you pay that that fee. So just keep in mind when when you get the email saying this was shipped, about a day later you're going to get another email telling you to pay the fee. Uh, so just make sure that you do that. Okay, so here we are on the bottom side, and I think this is what they were describing, that one of these, if we're using the Warthog, has to be connected in such and such a way. I'm not using the Warthog, so I don't care. But now what I'm not sure about is what goes where based on what I am using which is their stick. So I guess it would have been kind of nice to maybe say that, but I'm sure I can figure it out really easily. So I'm not going to knock them for that. Like I just bought this thing as far as, I mean, th this is an individual piece that's sold. So the stick was its own thing. This was its own thing. And in this case, they're just, you know, leaving it to my discretion of what I want to do. You can see a speaker that's down there. So from what I understand, there's tonal uh, feedback as you're programming and whatnot. Now, the biggest shocker to me, I guess, is this thing doesn't move at all. Like, it's just there. And that means when the stick is on it, and I'm not going to properly fit it, the stick isn't going to move. So that means that the, the stick stays still all the time. And what it senses is the pressure that you're putting on it, but the stick isn't going to actually give you any swing. And that's insane to me because this thing has so much slop in it. And not only that, I have a huge dead zone on this because it, it, it's old. So I have to go like this to like get any response. This, on the other hand, is just going to sit there. I, I, I mean, hell, it's already been 20 minutes. What's another 15 of me just screwing around with this, right? Uh, okay, so let me see if that... All right, that feels right, right there. So now I think I go down with it to tighten. Yeah, sorry. All right, that looks right. Okay, so now let's just... I'm not going to bore you with me screwing it into the plate. Maybe I will, actually. So that's it. It, it doesn't move. I mean, it, you know, it's wobbling because it's in foam. But it, it, it literally is one with the base. And that is going to be a flying experience that I will, I, I will have never dealt with before. That's going to be really strange. 
So it's going to be cool to kind of see how this is. But I would imagine that for like air to air refueling and, and whatnot, where I normally have such a big problem with this because I'm, I'm dealing with this slop all the time. This, I'm just going to kind of like push on it, press on it, pull on it. And it's going to understand these kind of micro um, uh, uh, inputs that I'm giving it. So I'm wondering if this is going to be way more accurate. But then if I have to pull a high G turn and I'm yanking, like, mm -hmm, there is no yanking back, but I'm pulling back on it. Like this, it was so nice to just go, uh, you know, <laughs> pull a loop or whatever. Am I going to have that here? I, I'm sure the answer is yes, but it won't be a pull. It's going to be a pressure. It's very interesting. Okay, so I, I was going to maybe plug it into the base for you too, just to kind of show, but I'm not exactly sure what cables go into which slots. And since I'm not sure about that, I'm going to not do that. Um, I'm going to read up and figure out what's what and put this on. But maybe I'll, I'll once I get it kind of up and going and I have to download the software and all that stuff, uh, I'll let you know how that part goes. But this was just kind of, again, uh, uh, an unboxing just to kind of show it. Um, I guess I would have the same criticism for this case as well. It's awesome. Don't get me wrong. This looks so cool. It even has like the little rubber grommet to keep it... Um, weatherproof so it won't the insides won't get wet there's like a little notch so it kind of you know flops down snaps back in carrying case it's awesome like if i was like 16 years old still i'd be like oh look i got something from like you know the real air force i don't know i'd be nerding out and making some some bs up to try and impress my friends but in my old age um it's just I didn't need to pay an extra forty or fifty dollars for this thing, that whatever this cost. Um, it's great. It's cool. It's properly packaged. I mean, I'm not a ding or a scratch on it. I mean, it looks great. It's heavy. It's very weighty. Um, same with the base plate. This thing. I mean, I'm having. Never mind. Uh, it's heavy though, and so I imagine when I put it on my desk and I'm actually pulling on it, the thing's not going to just flop around my desk. And even if it did. Uh, it looks like there's mounting screws kind of pre-drilled for you. So I'm very happy with it. I think the total cost for this was maybe a little bit less than a grand. I think with the with the collector's edition, it would have been, um, I think with this one, uh, I saved a little bit of money. Um, and we'll we'll kind of see how it goes. But that I'll, I'll wrap it up there. Um, again, very, so far, so good. Uh, very impressed with it good packaging, good explanations, and uh, we'll see where that goes. So thank you for watching. Uh, again, I run the Operation Candyland DCS server, which currently is a multiplayer server, uh, PVE, uh, and it's um, a server that uh, the, the AI and everything are persistent. So the server restarts and everything picks right back up where it left off, uh, and we just move across the map and, and capture it from the AI. Um, so come check it out. You can just Google, or I'm sorry, go to the DCS uh, server um, list and just look for Operation Candyland and you should be able to see it. I'll put some information in the video below. All right. Thank you so much. Take care.